if I knew then what I know now, I never would have gone on the birth control pill and it would have changed my life. I've been responding to many beautiful women who write to me about their vulvodynia and vestibulodynia and want to know why this has happened to them. They also found that their symptoms started slowly after beginning birth control pills. Because it can usually take a while, it's, it's easy not to think that it's your pill that's causing this issue. Also, the medical community is kind of divided on this and that's why I really appreciate Dr. Goldstein's work because his team is bringing awareness to this issue and doing the studies that need to be done. There's really only a few specialists and doctors doing research on this stuff, so it's hard to find good information out there. So to start, let's talk about how the pill affects the vagina. The vagina and the vulva can be thought of as three separate parts due to their embryological nature. That is how they developed prenatally. Before you're born and your little genitalia is being developed, your cells make three different tissue types, mesoderm, ectoderm, and endoderm. The ectoderm makes up the tissue of your outside of the vulva, your labia majora, your hood, your clitoris, and your perineum skin. The endoderm is the vulvar vestibule, the skin starting at your heart's line on the inner labia minora and then the skin that makes up your hymen and vaginal opening. Lastly, the mesoderm, this makes up the inside of your vagina. So because that's three very different types of tissue, it now makes sense that each area would respond very differently to different hormonal states. And with hormones, we know that you can have too much, you can have not enough, or you can have an imbalance. That's also why each area responds differently when you have infections, allergic reactions, irritation, or traumas. Most women with vulvodynia have pain confined to the tissue of the vulvar vestibule and not the outside vestibule or inside deep in the vagina. So it's really localized. And I guess it's really more appropriate to call this vestibulodynia in, in this case. If you remember from my Vaginas 101 video, look at your vagina, you'll remember I said that the vestibule contains many glands, the Skene's glands, the Bartholin glands, and the minor vestibular glands. These glands, when stimulated by hormones, make that amazing slippery lubrication that you feel during arousal and intercourse. So here's problem number one. When most people think of hormones that affect the vagina, they think estrogen and progesterone, right? Well, we forgot one. The glands that I just mentioned, they rely on testosterone or hormones called androgens. These androgens act on the androgen receptor in the cells to cause the production of that lubrication. And this is where things can start to go wrong if you're on the pill. The system can go wrong in a couple of ways. You can have a low level of androgens, so those receptors don't receive enough hormone. And also the receptors might not function correctly, and this could really be genetic. The pill can cause both problems, not enough androgens and also a faulty receptor which would make you more susceptible to the negative effects of the birth control pill. So now that we've discussed that, let's have a quick chat about how birth control pills work. Almost all oral contraceptives contain a combination of synthetic estrogen and synthetic progesterone, called progestin. All pills on the market contain the synthetic estrogen, ethanol estradiol. And for your information, this is one of three estrogens and it's the most potent. The ingredient that makes all the various types of birth control pills different is the type of progestin used and the varying amounts of ethanol estradiol. Since visiting Dr. Goldstein, I learned that in the last 20 years, most birth control pills contain a new generation progestin, much different than the birth control pills our parents used to take. These have names like drospirinone, found in Yasmin, desogestrel, and norgestimate, found in tricycline and the NuvaRing. I was on tricycline for 10 years and my symptoms of vestibulodynia and chronic pain started two years after I began. Also when I started the pill about 15 years ago, there was a big movement towards low dose pills. Low, low, less, tricycline low, you get the point. And what's crazy is any pill containing 35 micrograms of estrogen is already considered a low dose. And these pills, the ones that I just mentioned, contain as little as 10 micrograms. So many women, myself included, were led to believe, oh, this is a great idea. I'm getting a lower amount of synthetic hormones. Perfect, less must be better for my body. 
And only now are we being told that birth control pills with low dose hormones actually increase your risk of developing vestibulodynia. Also for the record, birth control pills back in the day had about 50 micrograms. So that gives you an idea of why this is a relatively new discovery and a really unfortunate one for many women. Now back to the lesson. Birth control pills work by preventing the production of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone. Ovulation is stopped and therefore pregnancy is prevented. Because FSH and LH are not being made, our little ovaries aren't making estrogen, progesterone, or androgens. The synthetic hormones in the pill are metabolized by our great liver, and our liver produces a protein called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG for short. Now SHBG is like a little Pac-Man going around chewing up sex hormones. It especially likes androgens. Certain progestins, like the one in Yasmin, Tricyclin, and the Nuvaring, are especially good at raising our SHBG levels. So what does that mean? The combination of our little ovaries not making androgens and the increased production of androgen-eating SHBG not only reduces our androgens, but makes our androgen receptors sticky or faulty or just turns them off. Another side note, studies have proven the pill shrinks the size of the labia, reduces the size of the vulvar vestibule, and reduces clitoral blood flow. It also makes the tissue more susceptible to tears and fissures and causes sensitivity to pain. So the thing that's supposed to protect us from pregnancy is actually drying out our vaginas, killing our libido, making us more prone to tearing, and shrinking our clits. What the f Something else that I've learned is women who take oral contraceptive before the age of 17 are 1000% more likely to develop vestibulodynia. Are there other reasons women develop vulvodynia? Yes, absolutely. Pelvic floor issues, tight muscles, pedendal nerve injuries. So what can be done to fix this? Or reverse the damage, I guess. Well, again, I'm not a doctor and I can't prescribe medications, although I wish I could. But according to Dr. Goldstein's literature, women can be successfully treated by having them stop oral contraceptive pills and by applying a compound that contains topical estrogen and testosterone to the vestibule. He's found that on average, vestibular pain drops from about seven to a two on a 10 point scale after three months of treatment. And as I mentioned in my vulvodynia video, this personally has done wonders for my tissue and pain. Why does this happen to some women and not to others? I have many friends who have been on the pill for years and never had an issue. So it really can be genetic. Some women are born with weaker androgen receptors and therefore would be more susceptible to the hormone change caused by the pill. The strength of your androgen receptor is determined genetically at birth based on your chromosomes and the length of your androgen receptor genes. So there's not much we can do about it there. Here's a great example. It's not a good one, but <laughs> you might get the point across. Some women's bodies are like Lamborghinis and some are like eco-friendly hybrids. One goes through gas like crazy, and one is super fuel efficient. With lots of gas, both work fine. But if there isn't enough gas, the Lamborghinis are gonna run out of gas way faster than the hybrid, right? The gas shortage in this case is the birth control pill, and the gas guzzling Lambo is a wonky androgen receptor. Now, before I wrap this up, I wanted to answer a few questions that have come up. Number one. If birth control pills are causing my vulvodynia, will stopping the pill make the vulvodynia go away? Unfortunately for many women, just stopping birth control pills does not cause the vulvodynia to resolve. When I asked my doctor about it, I found out this is because even after stopping oral contraceptives, the level of SHBG frequently doesn't go back down to the levels they were before stopping the pill. So this just leads to low androgen levels and the vulvodynia doesn't go away. In my experience, I did need the addition of hormones to start feeling better. Number two, can I stay on the pill and just use topical hormones as treatment? So I tried this uh, for two years, actually, as this was the treatment of a physician I was seeing down in Arizona. And at first it got better, but then it just flat out stopped working. And actually I had a lot more burning and swelling and unpleasant side effects from staying on the pill while using the topical hormones. It was later that I found out that progestin in the pill can turn off the androgen receptor, so using the topical hormones without stopping my pill just didn't work. And number three, if my vulvodynia goes away, will I ever be able to go back on the birth control pill? My personal opinion is why would you want to? I discontinued the pill for a few years during my 20s and, and this problem never resolved. 
Honestly, I would consider an IUD, but again, it would be a non-hormonal option and something that I would very carefully have to talk to my doctor about. But I'm interested to know what you think. Do you have a different experience on the birth control pill, good or bad? Leave it in the comment section below because I'd be happy to chat about it. If you like this content, subscribe and um, I'll see you soon.